like a really, really boring lecture turned out to be, I think, kind of fun. Because what we did was we were able to figure out how to start to accomplish our goals and figure out when to, what intervals to do, when to do the intervals, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, let me do something I forgot to do. Thought process. If we do this, then we should do this. If we see mm -hmm. this, then we should do this. You know. So I think it really was helpful. We're going. We're going to practice lots of those. I'm going to teach you one more integration technique, and then um, it'll take a day or so to finish that lecture. And then by the end, um, you will have lots of practice. So we'll do a little more derivative stuff. We'll put together some integral stuff. You'll pull together what I'm teaching you today, and then voila, we'll have our test. Okay, I know, Michael. <laughs> What's a test? Like I said, Michael, if you need anything, I have all the notes. That's it. And we have lectures online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I so. can teach Michael something. And as I go back and look at them, I know No one can teach Michael something? <laughs> what? Michael, so what's good? Lesson. Okay, the idea for today's lesson is something called <laughs> integrating by parts. You said that two days ago and I was like, I won't do that. Yeah, I love doing it. I love teaching it. By I love it. Like by pants. Yeah, you integrate with pants. Thank goodness we all wear pants nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> You have to wear parts. I mean, pants. <laughs> you have to wear parts. Okay, so. So, if, let me just show you how this all works. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that. Now, if I look at this, okay, for a moment, let's dissect exactly what we see up here. We should probably see this with it. Sorry. Yeah. So, what do we see exactly up here? I see the integration symbol. Mm -hmm. I see uh, <laughs> no more numbers involved in life. Yes. Oh, we have yeah. the e to the x. I have an e to the x. The integral is the same thing. And its integral is the same thing, right? And I have an x, right? Mm -hmm. so, so far, does that make sense? Let me move over here for a minute. Okay. That's pretty complicated. Actually, actually, yeah, actually this one is a little bit easier than this one. Why? Okay, up until now, when we're doing integration, one of the things that we kind of try to discover is, could we potentially call something U and take its derivative? Does that make sense what I just said? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm looking at this guy right here, what hopefully naturally do we our eyes kind of go to to call you? The x squared. The x squared part itself. So because if you think about all the ones that we've done so far, it's like e to the u du or e, you know anything mm -hmm. to that power. Okay. So if this guy right here is u. What is its derivative? 2x. Two 2x. Two Two X. What do you see in front of the e to the x squared? X. Ah, you see an x. What did you say the derivative of this was? 2x. Two X. Two X. We so see you, an x. So what do we do? We put in a 2. Mm -hmm. So if I stuck a 2 in here, what do I naturally have to do? Pull out a 1 half. Pull out a 1 half. Everybody okay with that? So why? Is that what you said? Yeah, what's the relation between that exponent there and then the coefficient? Or, I guess not a coefficient. Okay, yeah. what is the derivative of this? 2x. What, we had an x. Yeah, we make it 2x. We want a 2x. Because if I rewrote this right now, right, this right here is e to the u. You agree? Mm -hmm. This right here is du. 
Miss K? Uh, yes. So you can call the exponent U? Correct. Correct. And so I have the one half that goes for the ride. Now, what did I tell you? What is the integral of E to the U? Uh, it's the integral. You guys have your bright colored sheet of paper if you don't have it memorized? Isn't it E to the U plus C? Yeah, it's E to the U plus yeah. C. Right? Can I take an integral of E to the U? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can. Because I have all the pieces that I need. I have an E to the U, I have a DU. So right now, the integral of E to the U is E to the U. So I'm just gonna, what do I do with this one half? Just goes for the ride. Goes for the ride. I have E to the U plus C, not quite finished with my problem. Because I didn't want to have a U, I want to have X stuff. So what would it be? It'd be one half E to the X squared. X squared. Plus C. Smiley face, you're done. Wait, this is why this one is easier. Yes. I think you just get rid of the 2x. It, when you take the. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I don't get it. <laughs> when you take the integral of the derivative, it goes back to the original. And does the original have a du in it? No, it's just a function. So when I integrate, because do you see that this whole thing. This is e to the u. This is the derivative. The 2x oh. dx. Okay. So when I, the, the definition of the integral of e to the u du is e to the u. Do you see that the du goes away? Yeah. yeah. So it just it disappears. The integral, okay, let's think of it this way. Have a function, take its derivative. Right? Mm -hmm. Take the integral of the derivative. What do I end up with? The, the derivative? I mean the regular one. The original function. So let's look at it as something we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. X squared. Yeah. Take its derivative. It's actually mm -hmm. 2x dx, which you, whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. You with me there? Yeah. So have a function, take its derivative, integrate. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and go backwards. Mm -hmm. So when I integrate, what do I get for an answer? I get 2x, 2x. squared over 2, right? Which is x squared. Which is x squared. Where did the dx go? It's gone. Why? It's integrated. Because mm -hmm. I integrated the derivative. Okay, so back over here. I have e to the u, and all this stuff in green is du. So when I integrate it, the e to the u stays, and the du disappears. Okay. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, now, why is this problem easy, relatively speaking? Because what? Because it's e to the u. It's e to the u, and it has a du, almost a du there. Yeah. Does that make sense what I said? Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it, it's available, it's there, like, we can make one up that has an easy aspect to it with an e to the u. So for example, an, yeah. let's say it's e to the x cubed. Mm -hmm. What in front of this would make this an easy problem? 3x three three x squared. A 3x squared or an x squared because I can insert a 3, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Do you see why this is an easy problem? Because I have an e to the u, I have a du or a version of the du. Mm -hmm. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, back over here now. Let's talk about this. Because obviously that's exciting. Tell me what you see. Relate to what I just talked to you about. If you wanted the x to be the derivative, you would have to square the exponent and then put it to. Hmm. Yeah. So in calculus, you can't. You can add a three. You, you can insert a three and pull out a one third. You can insert a ten and pull out a one tenth. Mm -hmm. You can insert any number and pull out its reciprocal. You cannot manipulate it with an x. You can't change it by multiplying by an x, or raising it to a power of x, or changing its power with x. Mm -hmm. I could certainly put a two here, but definitely nothing to do with x's. So, unfortunately, that's not an option. So now what? Huh. Interesting. Huh? 
Can you explain? Can't do anything with X. Oh. Yeah. I can put a two in front, but not as an exponent. Um, yeah. Can you multiply the inside by one or the square root of one? Because There's no relation at all whatsoever. Do you agree with me? Mm -hmm. X and E to the X have no relationship. For example, if I took a derivative of this, it's not this. Unlike if I took a derivative of this, I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. When we use this technique that I'm going to teach you today, okay, it's called in integration by parts, is when they have no relationship whatsoever. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are we good so far? So it's a backup plan? It's a backup plan. And like when you're trying to factor a trinomial and you can't boil it, so you just plug it in the quadratic formula. Correct. Backup plan. Is so, it only going to work for those that aren't related? Or like Correct. Ones that aren't when easy to... There are two things that are... Um, when, when you have two items that involve their own x. Did that make sense what I just said? Yeah. Like I have an e to the x, that's an x. I have an x, that's an x. But they don't have any relationship to each other. That's a relationship. This is not. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> like I could put e to the x and sine x here. <laughs> they would have no relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. If I had e to the sine x, cosine x, dx. Do they have a relationship? Yes. Because mm -hmm. the derivative of sine is cosine. Right. So I have e to the u du. Mm -hmm. That's a relationship. Make sense? Yeah. So if there's a relationship, so what should we do? If we're thinking technique and we're thinking steps, the first thing I do is revert my i to what could be the u, mm -hmm. take its derivative. Is a derivative available? Yes or no. If it's available, good job, I'm on my way. If not, I might have to use this technique. And remember, we got to about number three yesterday. There's three ways. Number four, integration by parts. Yes. So if you had the integral of e to the sine x, um, and you had to make a cosine of x, what would you pull out? Would you need to pull out anything? You cannot you... make a cosine of x. Yeah, because like if it was just plain e to the sine x, you know the derivative would be cosine, but you put it in front of the e. Would you need to pull out anything? In front of the integral? Um, you, you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't be able to pull anything out. I'll show mm. you how to do this one. Though. Okay. Right, good question. Okay, so let's start with one I, one I think that is a little bit more simplistic. Okay? Mm. So, um, with integration by parts, literally you're going to come up with four components. Okay? The four components is going to be something that you're going to pull together uh, in order to utilize. Now, I'm wondering if it's in packet. So I'm going to write it up here. Do you have anything that looks like that on your bright colored sheet of paper? Okay, I think I remember looking. seeing that. You've seen it? Yeah. Okay, do we say yeah. it is. Yeah. Do they have a name for it? Do they call it something special? No. No. They don't have anything special about it, but yeah, they have it. They don't have anything special. Well, it's not in the center of the paper, so I guess that's special about it. That is pretty special. Hmm. We're going to name something to be U. Mm -hmm. We're going to find its D. Okay. We're going to... Yeah. We're going to name something to be... We're going to name something to be dv. I'll explain it in a minute. And we're going to find its v. Okay? So, the idea when working these problems is, I do the same one, oh, that's pretty cool. The first thing I look at is I want to be able to find, I want to, I'm going to have, I speak English, sorry, I speak. I want you to take both components here, okay, there's 
can you can you see what the two different components are? Yeah, like e to the x would be one component, and then x dx, and then x dx would be the other component. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to all? Okay, or it could be the other way around. However, you look at it, it could actually be x e to the x dx. This could be your one component, and this could be the other component. Okay, so it depends on what we're looking at. So the first thing I need to do is I need to call one of them U. And in, keep in mind that eventually I want to take its derivative, right? And I want to be able to take its derivative so it becomes a lesser value of what it was before. Help me, Ms. K. At X, and I call that U, what would its du be? Derivative of it be? One. One. Did that go down in stature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? If I call this e to the x to be u, and I take its derivative, what do I get? E to the x. E to the x. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go down in stature. Does that make sense what I said? Yeah. So I'm going to pick x to be my u. So the first thing I do is pick x here. And what would its derivative be? You guys said 1, 1 dx. Wait, so you want to pick the one that goes down? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to pick the one that goes down. Okay, so what's left over? Okay, so e to the x, dx. And how do I go from dv back to V. Integrate. I integrate. Good mm -hmm. job. When I integrate both sides, basically, right? Mm -hmm. DV comes to V. What does the integral of E to the X dx become? E to the X plus okay. C. But we don't even need plus C right now. Okay. So E to the X. So, you see what I've done so far? Mm -hmm. So I've got four things. One of the U, one we call find the U. One we call DV, we integrate to find V. You guys good? Mm -hmm. You're going to take each of these little components and you're going to plug it in right here into this chart. Okay? So, U was what? X. Okay. I'm going to go over here so it's spread out. Okay. So, I've got X. What's V? E to the X. E to the X. Good job. And then integral. What's V? U of X. U of X. And what's D U? One. One. I put D X, right? One D X. Now, we took each of these components and we rewrote it. Mind you, where we started, could we integrate it? No. Uh, we couldn't because there's no relationship. Now look over here. It's telling me that I can now integrate it and this is what the integral looks like. So I have x e to the x, that's done. Mm -hmm. And then can I integrate e to the x? No. Yeah. What would it be? e to the x plus c. Okay, so this comes down. If I integrate it, I get e to the x plus c. I'm done with my answer. Yes. Can you factor out an e to the x? You can, you don't want to. Don't worry okay. about it. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. Yes. Um, for like the, the steps you wrote before the answer, does having the dx there matter? Say it again. For the step you wrote about the answer. Right here? Yeah, does having the dx at the end matter? Well, we know that it says because the dx is attached that I can integrate it. Okay. So technically, yes, it matters. I always dropped it. You know, it shouldn't. It's a bad no-no, you know. It's one of those, this... It's one of those things that I shouldn't, like I put, it's kind of like this. When I write the word sine, I should put sine of x, but a lot of times I'll just put sine, cosine, tan, you see what I'm saying? It's a no-no. Shouldn't do it, but I do it, and you know what I mean. Yeah. I think, yeah, okay. So if that's about as bad as that is. So that always works. Always. Let's do some more. Is that only with the e to the x? No. Okay. As long as they're not like together, like you can't like So it's basically like the reverse of the things are multiplied together and it's no other fancy relationship. Yeah. Because technically they're multiplied together.
Okay, so we have to really kind of figure out. Yes. Can you call x squared u and then d would be 2x, so then you bring that to the exponent? Okay, so let's talk a little. Let's, I'm going to say, could you, the question you asked was could we? And I'm going to say maybe. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about why. Maybe, maybe, you know. We have to pick one of them to be u, and one of them has to be dv. Mm -hmm. The u, we have to be able to take its derivative, right? Mm -hmm. The dv, we have to be able to take its integral. Mm -hmm. Naturally, it feels really better to go to x squared and take its derivative because it does come to a lesser value, mm -hmm. to 2x, right? Can you agree? Yeah. If that was the one we chose, ln of x, we would be integrating it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you get 1 over x? Yeah. 1 over x. Yeah. No? Isn't that if you derive? If you derive ln of x, you get 1 over x. Okay. How do you integrate it? Huh. You don't. Huh. So do you see where I'm coming from? Okay. Hmm. So if I derive ln of x, does it become more simplistic? Yeah. For this mm -hmm. case, it does. It becomes 1 over x. And so that's how you choose which so one. So that's benefit. how you choose. You have to figure out which one is going to benefit me better. More? More better? Or whatever. Yes. Okay, yeah. so are we good so far? I'm not an English major. It's okay. <laughs> Thank gosh. So we have u, right? Mm -hmm. du, dv, and v. So those are the four categories we have to fill in. Mm -hmm. So what did we decide would better benefit us to be our u? L of x. L of x. Okay, what is its derivative? 1 over x. And remember, you really should put dx attached. Mm -hmm. That means you took the derivative with respect to x, okay? dv. Uh, x squared dx. X squared dx. Mm -hmm. If the dx, dx is attached, it told me, oh, now you can take its integral to find your v. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, those are the technicalities. And then, so what would the v be? X cubed over 3. Are we good so far? It's really not bad. It's actually... Now you've integrated. Remember what we talked about earlier? When I in, take an integral of a derivative, it goes away? Yeah. Okay, so now we're filling into our uv minus integral v du. That's this thing here. That's how I always learned it and said it, but you guys have it written a little differently on your paper. Okay, so u is ln of x, right? V is x cubed over 3. Are we good so far? Mm -hmm. Minus the integral of v, x cubed over 3, and then du, which is 1 over x, dx. Are we good so far? Mm-hmm. Okay, what happens with this guy? It just goes for the ride. And no, you can't take the x that's in the ln and combine it with the x cubed. You might want to just pull it to the front so you don't make mistakes with that. Okay, what happens to this over here? The x cubed over x? Yeah, it mm -hmm. becomes what? Um, x squared over 3. So I have the yeah. integral of x squared over 3. And really, what is anything over three? It's really one third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you all agree that you could actually, if I write it slowly, I could actually do one third times x squared dx? You guys with me? Mm -hmm. And what would the integral of x squared be? X cubed over three. Mm -hmm. So I have x cubed over three ln of x. <laughs> That's really ugly. And then mm -hmm. one third times x cubed over 3 plus c, clean that up to be x cubed over 9, mm -hmm. and you have your answer. So what do you think so far? Mm -hmm. That's just fun? It's fun actually, right? Fun? Fun? Okay, good. You're not going to tell me it's fun until I really push it out of you, but you guys are going to agree. Actually, to me, it's interesting, because last, last year, th this was the topic that they were all like, I just can't wrap my head around it. They kept coming back and, can you help me on how to do it? Well, I mean, I Your LN is like My LN is yeah. an H. It's an H of X. <laughs> actually going on is confusing, but getting all the losses, that's probably what we're doing. Yeah, okay. it's, it's not the, like, working it out. I think it's going to be the cleaning for me. Cleaning up. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. going to be my biggest problem. I'm going to need both pages. Is somebody at the door? Yeah, you get it. Thank you.
Okay. Hi, how are you? So, anything in common? No? No. If it had like sine x cubed, right? Do you yeah. guys agree? Then you could derive the x cubed and get 3x mm -hmm. squared, put a 3, go out of 1 third, yay, life is good, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, there's no, nothing in common. So, what do we do? You don't cry. Don't give me that ice. <laughs> I cry. You have to find u and dv. You have to find, okay, so we're going to go u is, du is, dv is, and v is. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one you want to hurry up and run because this is a really cool problem. Sorry, it's it's cool. No, no, it's going to take a while, but yeah. The whole, because <laughs> there's a cool aha moment in it, what I consider aha moment. So, let's think about my thought process. How do I, how do, I do this? What do I do? I, I try to find the one that I can kind of make it smaller. So, sine, if I derive sine, it becomes cosine. It doesn't really make it smaller. Well, both are derivable. Both are derivable, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a good, good thought. What about the x squared? It's it easier. It's not as... It yeah. does become a little easier. Okay, so let's go that route. Let's try the x squared for you. So, u is x squared. Mm -hmm. du is... 2x. Dx. Yeah. Is he already back? That's quick. You said be quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really impressed about that. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. So what's the integral of sine? Negative cosine. Go look, make sure. Yeah, it's negative cosine. Plus C. Negative. Because negative cosine. Negative sine is cosine. So if you want a negative or positive sine, you need negative cosine. Because the inter the derivative of cosine is sine. Mm -hmm. Sorry, negative sine. Yeah. And the integral of, of sine would be negative cosine. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. That was one that I had to look up because I was on one of the integral ones that, that packet, that yeah. university packet. I was like, okay, wait, what is this? Okay. And so I looked it up. Good, good. So I put uv minus integral v du together, right? Mm -hmm. So uv, so negative x squared cosine x minus the integral of v. Do, do you guys agree that that negative can pull this out to be a positive? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So v du, right? 2x dx. Wait. I pulled it up front to make a plus. Well, would it, it combine with another negative? Oh, yeah, because it's that minus the yeah, integral that, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, shoot. Up until now, I've gone to that integral and integrated. Yeah. Do the thing again. Tell me, tell me what to do. You do the thing again. You do it again. You do it again. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're just going to keep it. See, I told you, mind blown. I know yeah. you'd be so excited. Okay, so this goes for the ride. Mm -hmm. This still had nothing in common. With me? So let's say. Just get along with each other. What's what's my new U? What's my new DU? What's uh, my new DV? What's my new V? Okay, so your U is D, uh, 2x. 2x? Let's get rid of that X all again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what's this DU? Uh, 2. 2. 2. Dx, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's DV? Uh, cosine. Cosine of X. Dx. And then what's its integral? Sine. Negative. Negative sine. Negative. The derivative of sine is cosine. The yeah. integral of cosine is positive sine. Right. Okay. It hurts my head. <laughs> okay. So, do you guys agree that this is part of my answer? Plus, right? Now, what do I do? Well, because this is what I'm starting fresh, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be u v minus so u v so plus. 2x sine uv minus the integral. What's v? Sine x. Sine x. What's du? 2dx. Okay. So far I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So does everybody see where this guy came from? Yes. Does everybody see where this guy come from? Mm -hmm. Can I take an integral of this now? 
Well, the two can go for the ride, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the interval of sine? Um, um, no, no, no. Sine is negative cosine. Negative cosine. Front, <laughs> so negative cosine, which makes positive. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. sine. The integral of sine, sine would be negative, negative cosine. cosine. So I have negative x squared cosine of x plus 2x sine of x. And then we just said negative, right? So positive 2 cosine x plus c. Miss K? Yes. So now I'm looking at that. So how come you couldn't take the integral of cosine of x and take the integral of 2x and then be done? Like, Remember, you have to make one of them u and one of them dv. Mm -hmm. One has to be derived and one has to be integrated. That's true. So how do you know like when you would need to, to do this situation? If, if you get to a place where the interval is not, can't be done yet. Right. Yeah. Now, I've mm -hmm. got to show you something really, really cool. I have time, right? Really yeah. Really scary yeah. when you say you have to show Why isn't it 2x cosine? What? what, what? 29. 29, yeah. Yeah, you got that. I got 20. So the last one when you integrate the sine x, 2x, or 2dx, why isn't it 2x cosine? Okay, so the 2 is going to come to the front of the ride. Oh. Are you good? Okay. Okay. Is there a way around having to do that twice? Or is there only one yes. Way? Yes. Let me show you something really, really cool. That's what okay. she was talking about. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good, Brian. You know, I'm always going to try to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to show you a really cool way to do it. So let's start with the very first one I gave you. What was that? E to the x, x times e to the x. Okay. So, because this is a pretty easy x one. X e to the x dx. All my numbers in a half. Right. right. <laughs> Okay, so um, this thing that I'm going to show you is, is what we call the t tabular method. Tabular. So we're playing guitar now? Kind of. I don't even know that. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, you call like the riff tabs tabs. So. Oh, very cool. Like it. Okay, there's three columns that we're going to create. One column is alternate. Signs, S I G N S. Okay. Are we good with that? I want to make sure I spell perfect. Okay. One of them is going to be um, the U column. Okay. One is going to be the U column. And then what's the other column going to be, do you think? The V column? It's, what, do we, what do we initially have? The DV. The DV problem, right? The DV. Okay. Um, we're always 